Hey guys, Clint here again, talking about stuff, cop stuff, I guess. A boring day. It's a boring day around the house. It's cloudy out. The weather's kind of not nice. And uh, I don't even know what I'm going to talk about. My camera's crooked. I see that now, but oh well. I'm here. I just thought I'd turn on the camera. Maybe talk about some things. I don't know what to talk about, but uh, maybe I'll end up talking about the pre-employment polygraph questionnaire. Boring for some, but... And actually, I got a gross story to go with it. And I need to somehow figure out a way to cover up some of the details because it's, it's that bad. I got mosquitoes again. Having a rum and coke? Don't tell the wife. She hates it when I do that. I don't know why. Would you rather have me grumpy? <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. What can we talk about? I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Went to make a sandwich. The wife did some grocery shopping this morning and came home with four loaves of bread. I thought, good on you. Four loaves of bread. That'll last us a few days, right? I go to make a sandwich. I can't find the bread. I'm like, honey, where's the bread? It's in the freezer. I'm like, how, how am I supposed to have a sandwich? Thaw it out. But I was hoping for a fresh sandwich. I don't know. Don't make too much. I don't know. I don't want to. We go through two loaves in a day and a half. What's the point of freezing it right away? I get it. You know. Maybe freeze one loaf. But we're a family of four and we have sandwiches. Don't get me wrong, I love her. Okay, I love her. Sometimes I think she's listening to me when I talk about her, but I do. I do. She's great. She always she always gives me a minute. Hun, can you tell me where the scissors are? I'll give you a minute. I appreciate that. I do. She knows where it's at. She knows where the pair of scissors are, but she's going to give me a minute to uh, find the scissors. I'm just grateful she doesn't give me five minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is a police podcast. I should be talking about police, I guess, but sometimes I just stand in the kitchen. I just wait, wait until 59 seconds has gone past. Still can't find them. Top drawer. Thank you. I appreciate that she gives me time to figure things out on my own. I do. I do. You lose everything. I'm not telling you. I know where it's at. But I'm not going to let you know. Because I'm, up, I'm upset that you don't even know where the scissors are. I feel like I'm whispering right now so she doesn't hear me. I kind of started doing it to her the other day. She asked me to buy garbage bags. I did. But when she came home from work, she's a nurse, came home from work, and by the way, isn't that scary? She's a nurse. Okay, the COVID's running around town. People are getting this thing. It's contagious. I don't know if you've heard. But she's a nurse at a, what's worse? What? Tell me the worst scenario you could possibly think. Being married to a nurse that works at a senior's home? <laughs> yeah. And she's Asian. That's a double something. Oh, she's messaging me. I think she can hear me. Anyways, so she, uh, 
I buy garbage bags. She comes home with this first thing. Did you get garbage bags? So. And I'm like, uh, I'll give you a minute. What? What do you mean you give me a minute? That's right. I'll give you a minute. In 60 seconds, ask me again. It went something like that. I, I yeah, so it was just a boring day. Thought I'd jump on here. Probably not going to use any of this because it's ridiculous. <clears throat> Still trying to figure this out. Got bad hair. Terrible sweatshirt. Horrible lighting. Still working on this. Okay. Putting stuff up. But yeah, it's a boring day. Oh. I woke up this morning. My six-year-old just... Um, she just got Facebook Messenger. And uh, I woke up this morning and I look at the front of my phone and there's a message from my sweet Kylie. And it reads one word. It, it pops up right on the front of my phone. One word. Fag. I'm like, what the? Exclamation point. She used an exclamation point on it. She even, she even used proper pronunciation. Why am I telling these stories? What do you guys want to talk about? How about this? How about, you know, I've been seeing so many shitty videos. I shouldn't say shitty. How about you guys send me a video? I don't know how you're going to do it, but send me a video. Tell me to di dissect the, send me a video where you think the cops did everything wrong. Because I have this, uh, <laughs> argument with family friends and can you believe the cops did this that was bullshit they were heavy-handed here can you believe they did that and i'll be like yeah everything they did was right most things not all things but most things so send me a video where you think that the cops acted terrible maybe i'll agree hopefully i don't and we could argue because that's what it's about, right? This is about arguing, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. I need some more rum. Man, I need energy. I'm sorry. I got no energy right now. Come on, Clint. You want? You guys want to hear about the pre-employment polygraph questionnaire? I'll tell you about that. First, I think I need to... I'll tell you about it. You're not going to like the story. You're not going to like the story. And if my sister's listening right now, I'm telling you right now to shut this off. You need to shut it off. And I probably shouldn't be telling the story. But isn't this supposed to be about honesty and I'm supposed to say stuff that I want to say? If you don't like it, don't subscribe. You guys definitely aren't subscribing, by the way. But hey, if you kind of like it a little bit, I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers. Right now I'm under 30. That's my goal, a thousand. That's it. Once I hit a thousand, I'm fine. I'm fine. But, uh, yeah. you get any garbage bags so remember when i asked you to get garbage bags so just wondering if you got any so i'll give you a minute honey where's the mayonnaise i'll give you a minute sometimes i'll come out in the living room and i'll be like do you know where my shoes are my flip-flops right now do you know where my flip-flops are right now no i don't have any idea they're right in front of her so I'll go downstairs and all the bedrooms outside. I'll spend like a good five minutes trying to find my flip-flops. and She's sitting on them, basically. On purpose? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I refilled. I was just thinking when I was refilling. Man, wouldn't it be... It would be... A, 
Wouldn't it be great if she gave me 30 seconds? That would be a dream come true. I appreciate the minute right now. But 30 seconds? I'll give you 30 seconds. That'd be, that would be a dream come true. Maybe one day. One day, maybe. I don't know where it is. Yeah, you do. She knows where everything is. You lock. I'm not locking. I'll give you a second. <laughs> you lose everything. So. She uses so a lot. So. So is always a, like a demand. Like She comes home from grocery shopping the other day. I, I bought all the groceries. So. So you want me to cook dinner? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to get in so much trouble if I post this. She's painting the basement downstairs. She does a half-assed job. How do I know this? She tells me so. Comes upstairs. So. I painted half the basement. So. You want me to finish the rest? Yeah. There's no way I'm posting that. Oh, man. So I was telling you that I'm a little bit bored. It's Sunday. It's cloudy. We're out the lake. I can't do any surfing on my fancy boat. So, uh, so, so I thought I'd just, do you know that right now I'm renovating our house because my wife said, so that's not funny. I shouldn't have said that. Kidding. But, uh, let's talk about the pre-employment, uh, polygraph questionnaire. My entire time in the RCMP was frontline. I ended up, I became a corporal. I got promoted right at the seven year mark. And then I became a watch commander, which was my dream. That's what I wanted because I did a bit of it in Duncan. Duncan, by the way, was the best years of my service. I love Duncan. <clears throat> and uh, I spent four months. I left Langley. Got out of Langley. Love my house, but I got out of Langley detachment. There was some sad shit that happened at Langley. Neil O'Garian. I shouldn't even bring this up. I've seen some suicide in my day with cops. It's crazy. He was one of my corporals, and uh, I'll talk about that story the, an, another time. But anyways, I was able to get out of Langley, and I spent four months, my first week... In recruiting, I get a call saying, Clint, you got promoted. You got you got the job and mission, man. You're going to be the watch commander in mission. And I didn't want to leave recruiting. It was so nice to walk around without a radio. I didn't have a radio attached to me. It like eased my mind. It, my mind felt good. I felt like I was coming back to normal a little bit. And so I made my boss at recruiting tell them that, hey, recruiting uh, needs Clint. Because Clint is so good at what he's doing. He actually did this. And uh, he'll be there in a few months. But my job was to review pre-employment pre polygraph questionnaires. Fuck, man. It was great. Worked Monday to Thursday. It was great. By the way, I don't know if I said this earlier, but don't show up to an interview in a jean jacket, your RCMP interview applicants, don't show up in uh, a jean jacket and jeans for your interview. Even though, you know, it seems like all you need is a heartbeat now to become a cop. But uh, I think they ended up hiring him. So, so I'm reviewing the pre-employment polygraph questionnaire. That was my job. And then if something stuck out, I would call them up. And I would ask them questions about the about what they said. It was like question number 41. I, I can't remember, but it was about bestiality. And this, his name was Jessup. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this, but I'm saying it. Jessup ticked off bestiality question. Yep, sure did. My girlfriend used to enjoy watching videos involving horses. Okay, I know there's more to this story, so I... I get Jessup on the horn, and uh, oh, I can't believe I'm telling this. I'm going to sugarcoat it. 
I hate using... Why did I just say sugarcoat? I know my parents are going to watch us. And uh, I want to protect them. And my sister. So I've got to protect you guys. Don't watch it. Turn it off right now. Hey, Jessup. Uh, I see you ticked off bestiality. That, that is something you might have partaked in. Or partook. And he's like, yeah, man, my uh, ex-girlfriend, she was really into watching the horse video, so I had to watch that with her. And uh, I'm like, oh, okay. Being a cop, you know there's more to the story. You just know. So I said, okay, keep on going. What? Keep on going with the story. I know you got more. I know you got way more examples. Oh, okay. Well, uh... When my grandmother... Uh... Okay, I'm not going to say his voice, but it turns out that his grandmother had two dogs, two poodles. And when Granny wasn't looking, he, you know, not brutally, but lightly with his fingers, like just the tips of the fingers, I think. And uh, I'm getting really sick to my stomach and I'm like, holy fuck, we got a lunatic here. And I said, okay, I know there's more. There's more to the story, so keep on going. I know you got more stories. Mm. Oh, it was in Kelowna. He was in Kelowna. Turns out he was in Kelowna. He's at a nightclub. And I met this uh, girl. Met this girl at the nightclub, and she took me home, and she had two dogs. This is where I don't want to expand on details. Because it's still, like, I'm haunted by it. I can't even, I couldn't even look. When I went home that night, I couldn't even look at my dog the same way. So let's just, how do I say it in so many words? <clears throat> there was no sex, but everything other than sex, okay? It was a foursome. Everybody finished. Everybody was happy at the end of the night. That's what happened. He told me another story. I'm not going to get into it. But, and I'll, nev I'll never forget this part. After he told me the, that final story, I'm shocked. I can't say, I'm speechless. There's a big long pause on the phone. I'm not saying anything. Jessup's not saying anything. And all of a sudden he blurts out, that bad. Like, I don't know. It's perfectly normal. Obviously, he's not going to become a cop, right? Right? Everything he told me wasn't bestiality. Bestiality is defined as, was defined as, insertion of the man's thingy dingy. That's what bestiality It has to be insertion. So everything Jessup told me, he didn't have to tell me. But I get off the phone with him. I go up to my boss. I'm like, I got a real lunatic here. Um, he might be suffering from mental health or issues or something, but uh, this is what he's admitted to me. I told my boss word for word. My boss thought I was the crazy one. I'm like, what are you talking about? I, I, can't, wor I can't work with this guy. This guy might come to my detachment or I have to work with him. And he's like, uh well, Clint, if, uh, if that makes you feel uncomfortable, maybe you're in the wrong line of business. I'm like, really? So Jessup got hired. He's in the canine unit. I made that last part up. I don't know what unit he's in. But it was my biggest fear when I was working a mission that he was going to be coming to my watch and I'd have to supervise him. Could you imagine? I mean, how could I not say anything to anybody? I'd have to keep that secret. And he'd be sitting there in the GD pit, general duty pit at two in the morning. Yeah, the wife, me and the wife are getting some dogs tomorrow. Something weird like that, right? And I'd be like, oh yeah, fuck, I bet you are. Yeah, the wife has two horses. Something like just fucked up. Or he'd back me up. How about that? Or I'd back him up. Could you imagine that? You know? God. 
How could I not say anything to him? I don't know why I'm talking about things that never happened. But uh, anyways, he's, he's running around right now with a gun, I think. Point of my story is I'm trying to help the applicants out, right? You're putting your application together. You got interviewed. Now you got to. I can't remember now, but where it fits in. But if you're at the pre employment polygraph questionnaire, that might be right off the bat now. Uh, be honest. Be honest. I guess my point is Jessup didn't have to tell me anything. Because it wasn't bestiality. wasn't fucking bestiality man oh my god do you know what it was like being a cop for those many years and it's common by the way this thing with animals and people it's common did you know they just changed the law july 2019 in canada making it illegal to have a sexual relationship with your pet before it was only insertion Whereas everything else was all right. Everything else was all right. And they finally made it illegal. You can no longer have a sexual relationship with your pets or pet or somebody else's pet. Maybe you're cheating on one of your pets and you go over to your granny's house. I don't know. But what took them so long? Why was it legal for 140 years? In Canada? Why? What was more important than ensuring and protecting the safety of animals? What could be more important than that? Oh. Plastic straws? Can't get a plastic straw at Subway. Sucking your dog's titties is acceptable. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. That it took the Canadian government that long. Like what else was more important? Rainbow rainbow crosswalks. Absolutely. Rainbow crosswalks. Need more of them. Yeah. Hmm. I should probably stop right there. But I'm just thinking about fishing. I go fishing. I'm a fisherman. I troll in the ocean, and I troll with barbless hooks. Barb barbed hooks, illegal. Eating out a sockeye salmon. <laughs> oh, no. Did I just say that? Yeah, I did. I'm so not posting this. Pre-employment uh, questionnaire. Be honest. You don't have to be that honest. When I worked in recruiting, the number one thing that got recruits uh, deferred was that they hung out with uh, friends that did drugs. Back when marijuana was illegal, if you hung out with anybody that hung out uh, that did marijuana, you got deferred for at least a year. That rule, obviously marijuana is legal now, thank God. Thank God. But if you applicants, if you guys hang out with, well, I don't, I don't do cocaine. I don't do heroin. Heroin's kind of. I don't do Molly. I don't do uh, all this shit. But my friend does, or my cousin does. Then you're probably going to be deferred. And don't commit any criminal acts. Okay, obviously. Not that you won't become a cop because you committed a criminal. I know a guy that I'm related to very close to. He tried to become a cop. He did all those drugs when he was a kid. You know, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. All those drugs. He got... They said, RCMP said no to him because 
25 years later, he took a toke of uh, a marijuana cigarette, and that was it. Couldn't become a cop. So watch it with that stuff. But it's legal now. Marijuana is legal. Isn't that great? I, it's hard for me to even wrap my head around, but I smoked it for the first time this past summer, two summers ago. Oh, it's amazing. Amazing. I had friends over, my buddy there. I took two puffs. Two puffs from a marijuana cigarette. Walked into the walked into my bathroom and flossed the same tooth for ten minutes. I was paranoid I had gingivitis. My wife busted in. Will you hurry up? Stop playing with your teeth. We got company. My company? <laughs> what? Wasn't that yesterday? <laughs> you mean today is still today and not tomorrow? It's so weird. It's so weird, but it's so great. I don't do it all the time, but it's nice to... And RCMP members aren't allowed to do it. They're not, even though it's legal, they're not allowed to do it. They're not allowed to smoke marijuana. It's a 30-day kind of thing, but the point is, they're not allowed to do it. I think we'd all agree that that's one group that needs to do it. Really? They should be vaping it on their lunch breaks. Going to calls. You know, you don't have to get high out of your mind, but take a vape before you go to a... There'd be no more police brutality, right? Be nothing but love and giggles. And that's another thing. Police don't giggle. <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking about this. But police do not fucking laugh. There's no laugh and it's just soft giggles. Do you know how many hours I have spent every shift with police officers at Tim Hortons? There's no laughing. They don't laugh. Just be careful what you write in those that questionnaire. Just be careful what... And my God, I know if you take your interview, if you haven't, if you get the chance to have an RCMP interview, put on a suit, okay? Iron it. Make yourself look good. And remember, whatever you say, that person is going to call you on it. I got called on it when I was in my interview. <clears throat> I said, um, you know, why are you here, Clem? She said, basically, why are you here? I said, I want to be a, I don't want to protect my community. Really, I, I, I just wanted to hop in a police car okay, and go fast. That's what I wanted. All this, you know. I wish I could sit here and say, oh, I wanted us. Well, yeah, save lives. Sure, that, I mean, who doesn't want to do that? But I wanted, I wanted a career. I wanted to, I wanted to get money and I wanted to drive a police vehicle. And I wanted to have flashing lights and I wanted to be able to go fast, which I did. I used to bury the needle in the cop car and I loved that. And I miss that about it. That's what I miss. I was thinking I miss, maybe I'll get back to that. But uh, don't bullshit the interviewer. If you say, I don't know if you're going to say this, maybe you should, but maybe you should say something like, I believe in the RCMP mission statement. I believe in their core value values, which I said that. I said that. And you know what she said to me? Oh, you believe in the mission statement, yeah? Which is, and I memorized the mission statement just in case, just in case she asked me that question. And she actually, and I went on forever. And I started talking about all the core, core values and, and she, at one point she said, okay, uh, slow down, slow down. I need to, I want to write this all down. She wrote everything I said down. And she even admitted that she doesn't even know it. And she took a break and then reviewed it to see if I had it right. And I knew I did because I had it memorized. I memorized that thing for a month. So whatever you say, uh, be prepared to get called on it. Don't bullshit them. Yes. I miss being a police officer. I do. I was thinking about that the other day. I miss hopping in the car. I miss going fast. 
I miss a lot of things. I miss, uh, I miss being with, uh, like good buddies. Like four of my buddies were in my wedding. We were dressing surges. Look pretty cool. And, uh, I, I miss like that part of it. But when I became a boss, things changed. You lose your buddies. You're not really their buddy anymore. You have an asshole senior cop on your watch. He's out to get you because he's not doing it. Shit like that. But uh, that's what uh, I miss. I miss stupid shit. Like I remember being in Duncan and we're way out Maple Bay Road. And uh, <laughs> it's really icy out. And we get a call. We get a call of a B and E at uh, a golf course. I think it's on Dingwall or something like that. It's like a driving range. I can't remember what street. It's not Dingwall. Some other street. But it's close to the detachment. But we're far away from the detachment. And uh, have you ever noticed you can't say detachment? You go to go to detachment. And so we get the call, and uh, my partner's right behind me in another cop car, and I start I start driving. I uh, light up a cigarette and, because that was the best. There was nothing better than going lights and sirens to a call with coffee and a cigarette. Other people hated me. Other people hated me that had to use my car after because I, I was smoking, smoking in it. I Honestly, I didn't give a shit, which was probably wrong of me. But I remember I got a note on my computer once. Did you know that smoke will ruin the computers inside the cop car? No, they won't. Fuck off. You know that's not true. So we get a call. We get a call. And I, yeah, I put ice in my, I put ice in my drink. Why wouldn't you? Right? Makes it cold. I'm enjoying this. So we get a call. B and E in progress at the, at the golf course. This is the shit I miss. So I take off left off a road and holy fuck, my car kind of, it's slippery out. And right away, I grab the radio, the police radio, and I go, uh, hey, man. I'm talking to my partner. Hey, man, uh, you might want to be a little bit careful. It's really slippery out right now. I just about wiped out. And I go to the call, and I put out my cigarette, and nobody's there. They're all gone. Okay, they're geo away, gone on arrival. <clears throat> we didn't catch the little bastards. And... My partner is all of a sudden calling the watch commander. Turns out, I go back to the d -d detachment, and uh, so there he is. And they towed his police car to the d -d detachment because he totaled it. And I'm like, dude, what happened? He goes, well, you remember when you went, hey, man, you might want to slow down. I was thinking, fuck you, Clint, because he's already in a tailspin and hits a tree. Cop car gets destroyed. I steal the battery out of it. The battery is still good. It's a true story. Those batteries are pretty nice too. But uh, that's the shit I miss. I miss like s stuff like that because that was a good moment. Years, you know, it's funny. It's not really that funny, but I'd say a year later, uh, the the people that broke into uh, the golf course came up to me because I I had a relationship with these kids. They worked at a gas station. They were good kids. And one kid comes up to me and goes, hey, that was us. Like, he admitted to me that he they broke in to the golf course only to shoot some golf balls to use the driving range. We had a good laugh. But I think back, like, holy shit, man. <laughs> he just admitted to me that he had... They, broken entered but sometimes you got to be rational right you got to have a little common sense just kids breaking into a golf course like come on and shooting some golf balls you know, other cops they would have been like oh, you're under arrest and slapped the cuffs on him right and brought him back to the attachment threw him in jail i'm glad i wasn't like that i'm glad i wasn't like that and i'm glad i had a relationship with duncan was fucking awesome it was great I complained about it every day, but uh, it was great.
I'll fix my strings here. I don't know why I started talking about Duncan. Why well, am I looking up again, right? Why did I start talking about Duncan? I started talking about, uh, well, I forgot what I was saying, but uh, Duncan was a great place. Things I miss. Things I miss. Things I don't miss. Well, there's a lot of that. We had a girl that worked at our detachment in Mission. I think her name was Suzuki. Might have been Susie. But when we ran out of batteries, we'd have to go up to Suzuki and we'd, uh, Suzuki, I got no, we got no batteries. The watch needs batteries for our tape recorders and our cameras, right? Important stuff. They would hide the batteries. Like one person was in charge of the batteries because the batteries cost a lot of money and everybody was taking the batteries. Well, they were taking the batteries because we needed batteries. So many night shifts, you'd be working. No batteries. So I go up to Susie. I'm like, this is the shit I don't miss. I don't miss. Can I have a pack of batteries? Two packs? Can I have two packs? There's only four in a pack. Two packs? You want two packs? Let's start with one. Like, what is one going to do for eight cops? That's the shit. And then she'd tell me a big, long story how she was at. You know, I just walked past Corporal Scott's office and his tape recorder is right, right, right on his desk. It's running. He's not even around. He's just wasting batteries. Do you know how much money this is costing us? Well, Suzuki is not costing you anything. Okay, I promise you that. Like it's her money. That shit I don't miss. I don't miss the bosses. Some are good. Like, I had a great boss in Duncan. We had a great watch commander. But some are little fucks, right? You know what I mean? Like, real. Little fucking turds. That, uh... They did... Oh, yeah. I'd just love to talk about them one day. But, uh... They would ruin it. They ruined a lot of it. You always felt like you were in trouble. Like you were in shit for something. It was very negative. I don't miss the negative part of that. You know, going out and about, going out and about and arresting people, that was the fun part. Going back to the detachment and finding out what you're going to get in shit for, that, that ruined it. It was unnecessary. Didn't have to be like that. But dealing with the public, like dealing with drunk people, that's what I look forward to. You know, it, their negative comments never would affect you. Never affected me. It was the fun part. You'd arrest them, put them in the back. They were going to cut off your head, shit down your throat, kill your family, kill your kids. I like that. I would just sing to them. I literally would sing to them. You must have been a beautiful baby. They'd go insane. It was funny. It was funny. And they wake up in the morning in cells. I'd literally sing that song too. You must have been a beautiful baby. And they would just lose their shit. And you... I probably... You joke around with them a little bit too. They'd ask you six times in a row, what am I arrested for? Drunk in public, there's no charges. Drunk in public, there's no charges. Finally, after a while, you just say, murder. What? Who'd I murder? Your ex-girlfriend. Oh, fuck. I really did do that. I actually wanted to murder her. Something like that, right? You just mess with them. I'm going to edit that part. But you they wake up in the morning in cells because you're, you're working 12 hours. And you I was the one that would release them. Total different people. Sweet as pie. And you'd have a conversation. You'd laugh about last night, almost. And... Uh, that's the shit I miss. I miss that. I would love to be able to hop in a cop car right now, drive like a maniac, and uh, arrest a couple of people. With no charges, though. Believe me, no police officer ever wants to arrest anybody. Ever. Because the paperwork that's involved. Like, arrest people, charges, no. Arrest people, no charges, yeah. But, man... Because the paperwork. I'll get into that another day. 
I was supposed to talk about the pre-employment polygraph test. And I don't know. I guess we're just getting to know each other. You know what I mean? Thought I'd sit down. Blabber on. About the shit I loved. And uh, the shit I hated. I loved a lot of things. I hated a lot of things. Things changed after 20, 2008. Things changed in the RCMP. You know that family. Where's the family? You know, they're your brothers. No. No. We eat. We eat our own is what we do. We eat our own. And I think it has something to do with always getting in shit. You arrest somebody too hard. You put the handcuffs on too tight. You got a complaint. You know, I'm, I'm looking at, uh, you know, the commissioner saying 99.9%. Uh, nothing ever happens, right? But there's people that, the 1% that complain, and they're complaining about crazy things. Like anything. Like you can complain about, I got arrested. We got to take that complaint. Uh, put the handcuffs on too tight. Got to take that complaint. So it always seems like you were getting in shit for something. Always getting in shit. You'd work four on, four off. And during your four off, four off I would think, what am I going to get in shit for? What's coming? Did I do everything right? Which is impossible. You're human. All humans are imperfect. We're going to do imperfect stuff. Can't just let it go. How about not say anything? No, they got to say something. I even started getting that way, maybe, you know, unfortunately, with people. It's the last thing I wanted to be like, though. But yeah, and it's almost like it's a relief when somebody else is getting in shit. Oh, Bill's getting in shit right now. He just, uh, <laughs> he fired his gun at a dog and the bullet ricocheted into her leg. That happened, by the way. I won't mention his name. But it kind of relieves, oh, good, the focus ain't on me. It's not on me right now. Oh, man, the job could be so much so much better than it is. It could be. He's up. Fuck. We're just imperfect humans. Take everything so serious. Really? Assholes. Sorry. I respect cops. I do. I respect members, but some of the some of the dickheads that used to try to run the show with no no common sense, no rational thinking. You know who you are. And I'll bring you up one day at the right time. But yeah. So get ready. Knock, knock. <laughs> that was weird. I know I was talking about the pre-employment polygraph questionnaire, but um, I'll probably take like a two-minute snippet from this and then post, hey, tip for pre I don't even know what my tip was. What was my tip for the pre-employment polygraph test? Well, absolutely be truthful and... Don't admit to bestiality when it isn't. Although, you know, when grandma's not looking, you know, that is bestiality. Now. So don't be doing that shit. Hmm, those poor dogs. Although the dogs in Kelowna sounded like they had a riot. That's fucked. That's demented. Well, you feel uncomfortable, yeah. Uh... Maybe you should be working at a video store. What was wrong with the boss? Like, why would you hire somebody? Like, I don't... Okay. He's saying to me, it's not criminal. So, fucking a prostitute's criminal. Okay? You could fuck... A, you can't fuck a prostitute, but you could finger fuck your turtle. It doesn't make any sense. Like... 
Okay, let's just say, okay, he didn't do anything criminal. Does that mean we still have to hire him? Like, we can't gong him right then and there? He still has to go through the process? Like, we can't be that crazy. And it tells me something about my boss. Like, what are you into, man? Anyways, so I guess I'll end it. I'm going to get some more ice. Ow. That's something she would say to me. Clint, there's no ice in the ice maker. So, oh. You want me to make more ice? Yeah. Oh, my parents are going to hate this video. They hate that I drink. Like my dad said to me the other day. Just a suggestion, but, uh, you know, dude, I'm going to tell you, uh, kind of hurts your credibility. And, uh, you know, I think you're open for criticism because you're drinking. I'm just a guy that's six, it's six at night. I'm having a beer and thought I would throw in the video camera because, uh, I've been looking at a lot of police shootings later, uh, lately. And this is how I relax. Kids are out running around. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Could you? You know, I'm getting a lot of watch time minutes, but no subscribers. And I appreciate the people that are actually watching. I really do. That's from the heart. I think I think this whole thing is neat. Neato. 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 I like it. See, when I turn it off, I have to go out there and babysit and, well, just kind of nice sitting in here. I'm going to talk more about uh, recruiting and stuff, stuff like that. That's what I'm going to do. So subscribe to my channel and maybe something I say will help you out. And I think it's cool that you want to become a cop. Just make sure you get out of GD after three or four years. Because that weighs on the mind. Okay. Bye-bye.